Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. Hey Lane. Hello, how's it going? Are you ready to talk about some grassy things? I, you know what? I, that's one of the things I love about fall the most. I kind of save my grasses up until the fall because people just kind of naturally crave them then, you know, and it's just so great to have them fresh and they can be dried. So yeah, I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today. So friends, before we jump in, just remember the Gardeners Workshop Dot com is home base to everything that we do, and you can find a whole lot more going over there um, that at least that Lane and I are up to during our days. All right, Lane, let's do it. All right, so today we're going to be talking about six grasses. We grow them all as warm season tender annuals, and we start them all from seed, and they're just the perfect thing to put in your garden or on your farm to help fill up those fall bouquets. They just have such an interesting texture. There are different colors and they're just the perfect addition or like Lisa and I are big fans of just putting a vase full of just grasses is also such a pretty thing to do. You know that one of my favorite mixed bunches we ever made for supermarkets was the fall mixed grasses. I mean, they were so beautiful, beautiful, fresh. And then when they were finished fresh, you just turn them upside down and dry them. So I totally agree. Okay, so we're gonna start with Frosted Explosion, which is Panicum elegans. And this is one that just has the most unique heads. And just like the name Frosted Explosion implies, it literally looks like a little firework has gone off. It adds such an airy texture and just a sparkle to any of your bouquets. And I have to tell you, this is the one that I find that children are the most drawn to. And they're always just like, ooh, what is that? I want to touch it. Have you noticed that, Lisa? I have. And you know, this, um, I love Frosted Explosion. We succession plant that because we actually grow that one um, all season long. And I want to say that oftentimes when I feature that on a social media post, Not when it's exploded, but as like showing a harvest stage or something, people often say, oh my gosh, I have that growing out in my yard. You know, I mean, people really don't get it because they haven't seen it. Um, It grows tall and that bloom that comes out of there, if you want to call it that, that seed head, there's a reason it's called frosted explosion. It looks like an explosion with frosted tips. It is absolutely fabulous. So that is a great one for me. I love it as a filler. I love it in fall. I just love Frosted Explosion. Me too. And it's typically around 90 to 110 days to maturity, and it only gets about 24 to 32 inches tall. So do you want to share a tip for Frosted Explosion for everyone, Lisa? So we plant it close together, even though it says four, you know, like four rows in a 30 inch wide bed. I think this is a great candidate to be planted even closer together because it does elongate and grow up. And that just helps to really with your weed pressure also. Um, So, yeah, I would plant it closer. I would probably put six to eight rows in a 30 inch bed, which this is a newsflash here. I've never said that anywhere else. Uh oh, (laughs) sound the alarms. (laughs) All right. Now let's move on to green drops. This is one of my personal favorites too. The botanical name is Panicum violaceum, and this has these loose, arching, elegant looking tassels. It's different than a lot of the other grasses. They have a looseness to them and they start off this bright green color, but then they age to these red and purple and gold tones. And you can actually harvest them at different stages of their development, just depending on which color you're going for, which just gives them a wider window of harvest, which is perfect for anyone that's growing them to use tucked into their bouquets. I agree. I love this one very, very much. How tall does it get for your garden? I mean, for us, it's about 36 to 40 inches. Yeah. Three to four feet is what's typical. And then it's usually around 65 to 75 days to maturity. Do you have any special tips for green drops? So this is a great candidate to plant alongside your sunflowers, um, your weekly sunflowers that you're planting from midsummer on. If you want to have continuous um, harvest, while they do give a couple, multiple stems per plant, I mean, to be able to just cut an entire plant, three or four stems together and bunch those with a bunch of sunflowers is just a really great fall bouquet. 
Yeah. And like we mentioned, the days to maturity is only around 65 to 75. And a lot of the pro cut single stem sunflowers we often talk about are anywhere from 50 to 60 days to maturity. So those just line up pretty yes. nicely if you're starting them every week. Yes. Love it. Okay, now we're going to move on to two that are somewhat, I like to think of them as cousins. It's Lowlander <laughs> and Highlander, and they're both Cetaria Italica, and they both have green foliage. They just have slightly different heads, but a somewhat similar look. So Lowlander has more slender heads that have this purpley bronze look, and they're a little bit fuzzy and soft looking. And then Highlander has a bit larger, thicker heads. They're very textural and they're sort of a bronzy tone. And they can be anywhere from 28 to 36 inches tall or even taller in some cases, maybe up to 48 inches and only around 60 to 70 days to maturity. So they're fast. They are fast. Um, and I really love both of these. I feel like just like, I feel like Lowlander's the little brother to Highlander. Yeah, Highlander's exactly. just bigger. Right. You know, there's just more of a presence. And um, I do find that Highlander is a great for drying too. I mean, it's just a great seed head. I agree. Does Lowlander tend to be a bit shorter for you in your garden, Lisa? The Lowlander is shorter and a little bit more. It's kind of got a more spindly, slimmer stem as well. I mean, yeah. literally they grow side by side. So they're getting the same conditions. It's just a smaller plant. And do you have any tips for Lowlander and Highlander? So because of their darker nature, you know, they aren't that lime greeny like our two previous and one to come um, is this is definitely one that I don't grow until start planting until late summer. It's a real great fall showboat. You know, it's just that natural color. So that's definitely a good fall only kind of crop. And, you know, I think people appreciate seeing flowers only in a specific season it just really points out how seasonality you know how the seasons come and go and these are that perfect fall color because they have that sort of bronze cast it's just yeah. perfect yeah all right now we're going to move on to our final two and they're both ornamental millets so the plants are almost corn-like in their appearance. So the first one is going to be limelight millet. This is Cetaria italica. It usually gets around three to four feet tall, and it's about 70 to 80 days to maturity. And it has green foliage and heads that are this fresh lime green color that just works all season long. And there's a wide window of harvest there because you can either get them when they're tiny and they're just starting to emerge, or you can let those heads elongate and get nice and drapey. Um, limelight is one that we frequently planted um, almost every week alongside sunflowers. We would put multiple seeds in one cell because we start sunflowers in plug trays. So it was just really simple and efficient to just start them at the same time. We put three to four seeds in each cell. They are not thinned. They are planted on that four rows um, with those multiple clusters and you can plant them in your sunflower bed or you could, you know, I mean, I'm thinking as we're talking about this, it would certainly be a great idea to have a succession grass bed, just like we do sunflowers from midsummer on, you know, I mean, just to really have that fall look. Um, limelight millet is really a favorite for me. I love cutting it really early when that seed head is just sticking out. It's not a seed head yet. The little head is just sticking out two or three inches that's when it is very upright and you can use it in bouquets as a spike. And because it's green, it goes in every color combination. However, I have learned in recent years by leaving them in the garden, those seed heads continue to develop into these beautiful draping um, seed heads. But I will say draping flowers like Amaranth, Love Lies Bleeding, they all look so cool, but they're not as easy to use in bouquets as one would think, um, especially for home. If you're selling to home people, you know, retail customers, people just don't quite know what to do with them. So keep that in mind. And I love limelight because it can go either way. I fully agree. And that color, like we mentioned before, it just works so well, no matter what you're pairing it with. And I had some people at the open farm come up and ask me, they said, oh, I'm planting a lot of cranberry colors for fall. And I want something really lime green to pop against those. And uh, I just thought that was such a great point. Yes, for sure. Okay. Now we're going to move on to our final one, which is purple majesty millet and this is Sancris americanus or you'll also see it listed as penicetum glaucum and this one gets three to five feet tall 
and it's longer to mature. It's about 120 days to maturity. This has purple foliage and these big cattail-like spikes. And the spikes are very upright and they'll develop into that same burgundy purple shade as the foliage. So this is just a big, beautiful purple plant, very stately, very architectural out in the landscape. What do you like about Purple Majesty, Lisa? So I love, first off, it really looks like a corn plant more than any other grass I've ever grown. I mean, literally yes. the leaves and all of that. Um, and it's a dark color. The whole plant is dark. So that's definitely a, it's a late summer, fall plant for us as fall flower farmers, right? You know, I mean, there, you don't need that in the middle of summer or spring, early in the summer. Um, and I love it um, because I also see a lot of, if you leave some of the stems in the garden, um, it develops the seeds. And I've never seen as many birds on a millet as that I have Purple Majesty. I, maybe it's because the limelight is draping and it's not as sturdy for them to like land on. They're kind of moving up and down with the millet, with the limelight. But with Purple Majesty, the gold finches are beautiful on this. So, you know, after it's done with your harvesting, if you leave the plant, it will send up shorter spikes too short for cuts oftentimes but leave them for the birds how big of a spike do you like to get lisa if you're using it for flower farming purposes sure so when we sold to commercial florist oh my gosh i mean we would sell it 36 to 48 inches tall that's one of the reasons they loved it they could really use this and particularly if the foliage was pristine See, the foliage, because it's dark is very susceptible to show any kind of damage whether that's pest um, disease or rain potentially. Um, if you got your stems harvested, um, and by the way, the harvest stage is before what this image is showing here. Um, so if you're not watching us on YouTube, you're listening on a podcast app, Friends, there's a beautiful slideshow to watch with this that you can check out over on our YouTube channel. Um, I like to harvest Purple Majesty when it's about two to three inches out of the leaves. Um, and so you can, it's still green and um, it will continue to develop and move on. And that's how we sold it to commercial customers. And they absolutely loved it because they could use it in big installations. And, you know, so that is, it's really a useful flower. It really is. And like we mentioned out in the landscape, it just really stands out. And if you want to leave it to go to seed for the birds, they are going to thank you for it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is one that I and there's actually a cousin of this. It's not called Purple. It's it's a similar name, but it's more compact for the landscape. But I think that Purple Majesty is great in the landscape. The, the stems do not go down, in my opinion, in storms. They're super sturdy. So I think it's a great landscape plant, too. And it will repeat bloom. You know, it'll continue. You've got to cut it all the way at ground level when you harvest it. Um, but Sometimes it's just better to succession plant it and have a new round of stems on a fresh plant. Okay, well, that does it for this episode on grasses. I hope you all will be trying some grasses out in your landscape or on your farms or in your gardens. They're great for cutting. They have a wide window of harvest. And like we mentioned, they're just perfect for fall. Just pay attention to the days to maturity so you don't plant something that then gets knocked back by your first frost. And thanks so much for joining us. Please feel free to share your favorite grasses down in the comment section over on YouTube or using the form linked in the show notes. And be sure to share Seed Talk with a friend if you're enjoying it. And of course, please follow or subscribe so you won't miss any of our future episodes. And just thank you so much for being here. And you know, that's a great point, Lane, about looking at the days to harvest. I, in fact, think most people think grasses, they think in the landscape, are perennials. There are, we're yeah. talking about the annual grasses and there's such an opportunity to grow those. Um, low investment, high return, great fall harvest. Um, it's just really a great way to go. So yeah. So th friends, thanks for joining us. Remember the gardenersworkshop.com is home base to everything cut flowers that you need from education, equipping you with tools and the seeds. Um, and friends, until we meet again, ciao. Bye.